look at this landscape. This is a sphagnum bog. And this particular bog is very, very high quality. I know the history of this place specifically, and this bog has been untouched from since European colonization, which is very, very rare for any ecosystem in Lower Michigan. And I'm out here uh, and during spring, uh, sure guess as to how I got out on this boardwalk, <laughs> uh, but there is some very a couple very cool plants that are out early. So the first one is over on this side. If you see these uh, these flowers, uh, this is uh, if you know your plants, this is definitely in the blueberry family. You see these ursulate corollas. It's these fused petals that form a tube and have an opening at the end. And uh, this is Chemidaphne uh, calliculata, leather leaf. And you see its leaves are already out, already green. It's because they keep them over the winter. But during the winter, they flush tons of protective pigments into their leaves so their cells don't die. And it makes them brown and look like leather. But they bloom early in spring like this because they're able to capitalize and green up their leaves as soon as the weather gets warm. And their flowers are very, uh, a little dainty looking, but very pretty. And the second plant is kind of a showstopper. Let me see if I can try to find it and zoom in. So you gotta zoom in over here. So in this bog, since the soils are so nutrient poor, there's a carnivorous plant community. You can see it, you can see a new, uh, that red opening right there that I'm kind of zoomed in on a little under that leaf. And then there's one right above the leaf. It should be right in the middle of the video right now. These are the new pictures, new spring growth of Saracenia purpurea, the purple pitcher plant. And the you see the openings there uh bugs will fall in and get digested um a lot of it is actually done with uh bacteria in the species and this is the only species of saracenia the north american pitcher plants where um you see if you can notice the opening uh hope you can see at least but the opening is completely open to the sky and it's the only pitcher plant that um, intentionally lets rainwater into uh, its pitchers. Yeah, you can see a good opening right in the middle there. Uh, and uh, scientists aren't exactly sure why it's the only species that does this, um, but they, uh, they allow rainwater in and it helps um, it must do something for them, but apparently their uh, their success rate, their catch rate for bugs is very low compared to other Saracenias. But they just have so many bugs visiting them that it's it's worth it to have this strategy. And they're just starting to leaf out. I think they'll start flowering like relatively soon. Um, and yeah, very very cool carnivorous plants in here. And. Uh, I found a cranberry from last year on there, but I don't, I, I don't think you guys can see it. But yeah, I love, love this place. It's so cool. You might be able to recognize my channel banner from this location. And on my way back, I thought I might as well show off some other um, some more trees that are more typical of this transition area. And if you're wondering, my feet, no, my feet are not wet. This is just a little dry spot. So, yeah, I keep guessing as to how I, uh, how I got over here. But, um, there's, a this is a, um, a swamp birch, Betula pum uh, pumula, uh, just leafing out, uh, related to other birches. Uh, it's it grows in uh, high quality habitats like this, so that's pretty cool. 
and they're really small compared to other birch trees. They really are like miniature trees. And the other is uh, this deciduous pine tree. This is a tamarack arch where it's uh, something. On ta but yeah, every winter it sheds its needles and it's growing them out right now. And they're very tolerant of these acidic soils, but they can get kind of dwarfed by the uh, harsh conditions. But yeah, there's some bigger ones right there. I really love, love these trees. So you can get a better overview of the bog area here. And something that you'll notice is that it's very flooded right now. Uh, if I came back in the summer, there'd be a lot less open uh, standing water, except maybe out in the middle of the lake there. So this entire shoreline is just high, qu high quality bog habitat. It's really, really, really cool to see. It's practically untouched. And then if I zoom in at the lake here, you can see that mound there is a beaver lodge. So there is a family of beavers living here too. And they, beavers require that open water so they can uh, build their lodges on it. And then they have entrances underwater that they swim up. It's pretty cool. I guess these beavers don't have to work that hard to keep their, uh, keep their home. Oh, there it is. Sorry, it was pointing away. But I guess they don't, uh, they don't have to work that hard to keep their home uh, underwater. Um, because that's the only reason why the beavers are building those dams. They can have habitat, enough sta uh, standing water to build their houses. So I'm in the forest right next to the bog and check out this little guy. I cannot believe it. I always see these herping people and they have pictures of things that they just turned over a log for. I turned over one log. And there's this little guy, this salamander. I literally have never seen a salamander in the wild before. That is so crazy. Do not know what type it is, but... Really cute. And... It's just frozen or something, I don't know, it hasn't moved, but... That is pretty cool.